Is that your declaration tonight? Hallelujah, you're my redeemer. 
the voices. You have rescued. You have rescued my Hallelujah. life. You have rescued. You have rescued my life. And I'm and pick me up. Hallelujah. Is that anybody's testimony on tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but this is how I fight my battles. I fight my battles with worship. I fight my battles with praise. I fight my battles with the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just going to sing a little bit of it. Say, this is how I fight my this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm.
are watching, we greet you in Jesus' name. To those of you that are here, we greet you in Jesus' name as well. We thank God for this awesome time, blessed opportunity to be able to give God praise and to just come together, hallelujah, to worship and praise the name of the Lord. And I thank God for what he is doing in our lives, what he is doing in our midst. I believe that God is up to something great concerning us. Hallelujah. I believe that our eyes have not seen our best days yet. Hallelujah. Somebody said the best is yet to come. And so we thank God for what is to come. Glory to God. We thank God for what he is to do in our lives. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm in, in tiptoe anticipation of what the Lord is going to do in my life. I'm telling you, I believe down in my spirit, down in my soul, that something great is on the horizon, not just for me, but for you as well. Hallelujah. I believe that, hallelujah, blessings are about to run us down and overtake us. I believe that we're getting ready to walk in our wealthy place into our righteous place, hallelujah, into our place of destiny simply because of the power of God that is at work in our lives. And so we bless the name of the Lord on today because he is good. Somebody say God is good all the time and all the time. <laughs> God is good. Can you clap your hands? Just clap if you're watching. Glory to God. I thank God for these awesome worship leaders. Can we bless the Lord for them? Y'all sounded real good. Hallelujah. Thank God for these awesome musicians. Hallelujah. Making us aware of the presence of God. Everyone in your respective places, just thank God for our church mother. Hallelujah. Thank God for Pastor Marvin. I know they're tuned in as well. And we give God praise for you on tonight. Listen, I'm telling you, we, we have been in this series all month long, Mountain Movers. And I don't know what's going to happen in here tonight, glory to God. But I believe that God is going to speak a word into our lives that is going to help us get to our next place of promise, our next place of destiny, hallelujah, our next plateau. I need you to understand that this is just the beginning, hallelujah. This is just the beginning for you. You are just getting started. We ain't even hit the brink of it yet. We're just getting started, and God is up to something great. Come on, clap those hands and let's give the Lord some praise. We're going to the book of Numbers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The book of Numbers. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to try to be civilized. <laughs> Not get too excited too soon. Numbers chapter 20. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a few verses in our hearing. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. I begin reading it at verse 1. Then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, into the desert of Zin in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? And why have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us uh, to come up out of Egypt to bring us in unto this evil place? Is it no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates? Neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together thou and Aaron thy brother and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes and it shall give forth his water and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink and Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock and he said unto them hear now ye rebels must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beast also. Focusing right here, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because ye believe me not, 
to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Father, we thank you that the word of the Lord is already blessed. I pray now, God, that you take us further in this service. Do what only you can do. Be who only you can be. Speak what only you can speak. Today we are in tiptoe anticipation of what you're going to say to us. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, we don't know what we'll do. So, Father, today I pray that you open our eyes, open our minds, open our ears. Let he, let she that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God, you take these eyes, you see through them, you take this mouth, you speak through it. Father, let no flesh get the glory in your presence. You get the glory. The glory belongs to you. Lord, I pray that where there is a need for healing, the word heals. Where there is a need for deliverance, the word delivers. Where there is a need for breakthrough, the word brings us out, brings us over, and brings us through in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, that revelation knowledge shall flow freely in this place. I thank you that prophetic utterance shall flow as you see fit. I decree and I declare, hallelujah, that we will not leave this place like we came. We will not leave this broadcast like we came, but God will leave better than what we've come on today. I thank you, God, that as I decrease, the Holy Ghost is increasing in me even the more. It is my prayer now, kind spirit, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight. For you are my Lord, you are my strength, you are my Redeemer. It is in Jesus' name that I pray this prayer, the matchless name of Christ, that I ask all of these things. And we all shouted, yes. And amen. Come on, clap those hands for the reading, the hearing, and the doing of the word of the Lord. As we are coming to a close of this series, Mountain Movers, it is very important that we understand the power that we have in our mouths. It is extremely important that we take into consideration uh, what the scripture so declares in Proverbs chapter 18 that life and death are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. If you are a Bible reader, if you know anything about the word of God, you will know how treacherous your tongue can be. If you have any understanding of the word and if you've ever read the book of James, you will learn about how the tongue, hallelujah, has a way of causing great demise. But what I need us to understand is that the same tongue that can speak curses, hallelujah, has the capacity and the ability when we speak from a heavenly place to speak blessings. And when you speak from a heavenly place, the enemy and all creation is subject to your voice. It happened in the book of Genesis. God gave man dominion. He said, you have dominion. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, have dominion. I'm going to give you so much power that I'm going to allow you to name things and whatever you call it is what it's going to be. And so you must understand, I must understand, brothers and sisters, that in essence of it all, we really do have some power in our mouth. And so we have to be very careful how we use our voice in this season because your voice carries weight your voice carries authority your voice carries influence and however you use it glory to God that will determine the results that you get we talked about it on last week I said it uh, very clearly it doesn't matter what we say out of our mouth we can lie all day long but the results of our life would never lie the results will always show what we have really been saying within and of ourselves. I can get around you and say one thing, but if my internal dialogue is saying something else, then what I'm going to reap is that which I really believe. Ah, say amen right there. You got to understand that your voice carries weight. And there is a difference in your voice and your mouth. Are you here? When you understand, glory to God, that there is a difference in your voice and your mouth, you do more than just talk the talk hallelujah but you also understand that when I connect my voice to my mouth I don't just talk the talk but I have to also walk the walk see my mouth is connected to the talk but my voice is connected to the walk are you here you got to understand 
that when you step in a place, I feel pretty good, in a place of authority, don't gasp it too soon, in a place of authority, you must know that the enemy is going to come for you. He's going to try you. He's not going to like it, Sister Deja, simply because he knows what you really possess. And when you tap into that place of power, he understands that he's got to back up. He's got to loose him because power, hallelujah, of the most high God overrides power of the enemy any day. Somebody shout, I've got the power. We declared it on last week. I have power. I have authority simply because of who my God is and simply because of who he had made me to be. But now I take it another step further because there is something greater that God wants to manifest from within me. That which is going to happen now is not going to happen without of me from the outside, but it's going to first take place within me. And so my responsibility now is to mind my mouth. Somebody say mind your mouth. To God, hallelujah, that you don't have what you need to get to the next level. It is not that you don't have what you need to get to the next place of promise. The problem is you are not minding your mouth. You're just talking. You're just blabbling, and you're not attaching the mind of God to the words that are coming out of your mouth. But somebody shout, I'm changing right here. Developing a new voice. I'm developing a new tone. I'm developing a new sound. Oh, there is a new sound now that's coming up out of me simply because I'm learning how to mind my mouth. Somebody say, mind your mouth. Your voice and your mouth are two different things. See, uh, the Bible declares out of the mouth of, of babes out is praise perfected. See, praise come, comes from your mouth, but power comes, Benita, from our voice. Are you hearing me? Sister CC? worship comes from our mouth. Hallelujah. But authority comes from our voice. I'm shifting now into a place where I'm not just using my mouth but I'm using my voice. Somebody shout yeah. So we must understand, and I got to take my time just for a moment and then we get out of here. Hallelujah. We must understand the difference. Hallelujah. That there is a difference in your mouth and your voice. Your mouth is at a immature level. Hallelujah. What you say out of your mouth most of the time is, is based upon what you have heard somebody else say. Hallelujah. But what you speak with your voice is based upon your relationship with God. Come on, say yes. When you understand, glory to God the depthness of a real relationship with God. You move from just using your mouth to using your voice. Shout glory. Ah, oh, there is a greater place. Help me preach God. There is a greater dimension. There is a greater level. Hallelujah. That you're going to even right now, but it is going to require that you shift from just moving your mouth to moving to using your voice. Come on, say amen. to mind my mouth. I got to be mindful, Prince, of what I'm letting come out of my mouth because if I'm not careful, what comes out of my mouth will affect what my voice is trying to say. See, your voice deals with your internal dialogue. It deals with what you're saying to yourself when you're all by yourself. Your voice deals with what you're believing about yourself when you're all by yourself. See, your mouth, we said it all the time, you can make your mouth say anything, but when a voice speaks, come on here, when you hear a a voice. There is something about a voice. There is distinction to the voice. There is something significant about a voice. I don't, the people that I am close to, the people that I am connected to, glory to God, I know their voice. Are you here? The Bible even says it. My sheep know not my mouth, but they know my, and the stranger, because the power is not just in your mouth. The power is in your voice. Shout yeah. So, as I move into my next place, as I move into my next uh, plateau, as I go to this next dimension, 
I must mind my mouth because, I, as a matter of fact, I've got to shift from just using my mouth to, to using my voice because it is my voice that carries the authority. Hallelujah. It is my voice that holds the weight. It is the voice, glory to God, that speaks and does not lie. The mouth will tell a lie it, at any given moment, but a voice, a voice, a voice, a true voice from God, a voice that has been connected to God, a voice that is speaking from a heavenly place, it speaks and it does not lie. So it is important for me to mind my mouth because when I operate in a spirit of just using my mouth, what I'm operating in is a spirit of carnality. Somebody say carnality. Carnality is not going to get you to your next place. You got to get in the spirit now. Hallelujah. If you want to get to that next place of promise, if you want to get to that next place of wealth, if you want to get to that next place of prosperity, there are some different frequencies in the realm of the spirit that you got to tap into in order for you to experience it. Somebody say, mind your mouth. See, you got to understand that what you say, glory to God, hallelujah, comes out at different, different levels. What you speak, it comes at different frequencies. That's why sometimes if you ever have been in a heated conversation or an intense conversation, you may say something and then say, well, I take that back. But it don't really change anything because the frequency that you took it back at is not the frequency that you put it out at. So you must realize that as you tap into the realm of the spirit, you've got to speak, hallelujah, from spiritual frequencies. If you are speaking from carnal frequencies, you will reap carnal things. If you are speaking from spiritual frequencies, you will reap spiritual things. Come on, clap those hands and say hallelujah. So we must understand that there is power in our voice. You must learn how to use your voice instead of just using your mouth. If all you're doing is using your mouth, what that tells me is that you are in an infant state because out of the mouth of babes have I perfected praise, the Bible declares. Let's look at what the scriptures say. I don't know if I'm going to get to a hoop and a holler, but we'll see. The people chose with Moses and spake, saying, would God, that I, would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? They were angry. They were bothered. Why have you brought us, brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore have ye made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us into unto this evil place the place that we are in right now in other words it is no place of seed it is no place of figs it is no place of vines or of pomegranates neither is there water to drink Moses and Aaron the Bible says in verse number six went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and they fell upon their faces and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them and the Lord spake unto Moses saying see this is where you got to begin to pay attention because whenever God is ready to take you to a different place whenever God is ready to bless you there will always be divine instructions that will come as a prerequisite to you entering into your place of promise Watch what God said, what God says. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together. Thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before thy, their eyes, and it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock, so that so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. Gave Moses specific instructions. Verse 9. Moses took the rod from, the, from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered, gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels. <laughs> I ain't even going there. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses.
Moses lifted up his hand and with his rod he smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron this is what God said you ready now here we got children of Israel they're complaining they're in this wilderness they're in a dry place they're in a place where they don't see anything coming into fruition how many of you ever been there it seems as if the place that I am in is just done there's no water here there's no seed here we don't have anything to eat we don't have anything to drink and here I am following you and you're leading me to a dry place so they're murmuring they're complaining because the person that they are following seems to be leading them into a path of destruction but they have a promise now remember this they've got a promise but based upon what they see with their eyes they are not able to comprehend the promise you got to make sure that while you're on your way to destiny while you're on your way to the place of promise that you don't allow what you see with your eyes to cause you to miscomprehend what God said that's a whole nother sermon And the Lord spake unto both the air, because ye believed me not. Uh-oh. To sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. Now watch this. In verse number eight. <laughs> have, have mercy, Lord. In verse number eight. He gave Moses specific instructions, Viola. He says, take and gather the rod and the assembly, you and Aaron, your brother. When you got everybody together, I want you to do one thing. Speak to the rod before the people. And it shall give forth his water. Now, let me take a sidebar. And you can start kind of pushing me a little bit because I'm already over time. You're expecting things to move out of your way. You're looking, when you think of a mountain, you're thinking about bills. You're thinking about health. But God said, when it came to this particular situation, sometimes your mountain, sometimes your rock, is a person he said it will give forth his water and thou shalt bring them bring forth to them the water out of the rock so that thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink see sometimes when we get ready to move the mountain, it is not so much that the mountain needs to move in position. It is that the mountain needs to move from within so that that which is on the inside can be brought out of it. And so what God did and what God said was, I need for you to speak to this thing. And what you need to understand is this. When you speak to it, you're bringing glory to my name. It's not the water that's bringing glory to my name. It's the fact that you obey my voice. Yes, there's that word again. It's the fact that you do what I tell you when I say do it. It's the fact that you do what I tell you how I say do it. When you speak to it, it's going to bring forth its water and you will have what you need to go on. It shall give forth this water, and thou shalt bring forth to them the water out of the rock. The rock never moved from without, but it did move from within. Before he was given instruction, they saw no signs of water. They said it in verse 5. Neither is there any water to drink. 
But look at, look at what happened. Moses and Aaron gathered together before the rock, verse 10, said what he said. Moses lifted up his hand, Dejua, and with his hand, with his rod, he smote the rock. He took the rod. The Lord told him, take the rod. When you take the rod, I want you to go. I want you to speak to the rock. When you take the rod and you speak to the rock, it, the rock is going to yield water. Moses went. He, he did part of what God said. <laughs> he didn't do it in totality. He did part of what God said. Then he took it upon himself. Instead of speaking to it, Benita, he hit it twice. <laughs> tap, tap. <laughs> And the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank and their beasts also. But watch this, Didi. The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. This is what he said. Because here's the thing about it. If you're going to be a mountain mover, you got to operate in faith. We talked about that last week. you got to believe. He that uh, comes to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The first step to being a mountain mover is you've got to believe. Jesus told the disciples, you couldn't cast out this devil because, you, because of your unbelief. Watch this. The Lord said, because you believe me not to sanctify me, you don't even understand that you opening your mouth and doing what God has said. You opening your mouth and using your voice. Hallelujah. To be obedient to the voice of God is actually bringing glory to God. It is sanctifying God before the people that are around you. It is sanctifying God before the people that you hang out with. It's sanctifying God. Hallelujah. Before the people that you're on FaceTime with. It's sanctifying God for the people that you're chatting with. It's sanctifying God before the people that you're going live before. You got to understand that when you open up your mouth and when you use your voice. It's a twofold thing. You gotta open your mouth and then you gotta use your voice. You don't even realize that that brings glory to the name of God. But God said because you didn't sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore she, ye, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given them. The land has already been given. We are not waiting for it. It's already been done. But if you do not obey God at his word, the way he tells you to obey, you will forfeit the ability, your ability to bring the people to sin to uh, the promised land. Uh, it is very important uh, that you understand uh, how serious it is uh, for you. Uh, I believe I'm ready now uh, to speak with uh, God says, uh, speak church. Uh, you must understand uh, how important uh, it is uh, for you uh, to use your voice uh, when God uh, says to you that uh, you uh, must understand uh, how vital it is uh, for you to be able uh, to tell the difference uh, between your mouth uh, and your voice. Uh, your voice uh, brings sanctification uh, to the name uh, of the Lord. Uh, I don't want uh, you to forfeit uh, your leadership. Uh, I don't want uh, you to forfeit your promise. I don't want uh, you to forfeit uh, what God uh, has made available uh, unto you. Uh, you got to understand uh, in this hour, uh, it is important uh, that we fully, uh, somebody say fully, uh, obey uh, what God said. He told him, because you didn't believe. I know it's unorthodox. I know it may sound strange. For water to come up out of a rock. But I am gone. And whatever I tell you, you can bet your bottom dollar is coming to pass. I 
want you to know that as we go from using our mouth to using our voice, obedience totally is going to be the key. Fully obeying God is going to be the missing link to us getting to the place of promise. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go round and round in circles in a wilderness. 40 years, 40 day journey, turn into a 40 year journey and not reach the promised land. to make sure that what I speak is what God said. I'm going to make sure that what I declare is what God decreed. I'm going to make sure that my voice is the voice of the Lord. I'm going to make sure that when I speak, I'm speaking from a heavenly place. Somebody say, mind your mouth. Make sure you're taking in to consideration what you are saying. Don't just say anything, but use your voice. Open your mouth, sound the alarm. Don't hit the rock, speak to it. Look for God to give water out of that hard person. Look for God to yield you water out of the hard place. I am, you are, we are mountain movers. It may not move in location, but it will move from within. I want you to open your mouth, use your voice, and speak to the rock, water is coming, water is coming, water is coming, because I'm a mountain mover, shout yes, give him praise. Don't forfeit your promise, because you refuse to open your mouth. Your mouth and your voice, they work together, but they are two total different things. There are many people that have a mouth who have no voice. And there are many people who have a voice but have no mouth. If you're watching and you say, Pastor, this word was for me today. I just want to get in a place with God where I can use my mouth and my voice for his glory. I want to give God my life and accept him as my Lord and personal Savior. Say this with me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sins. I make you my Lord and Savior. I believe, I believe that you hung, bled, died, and rose for me on the third day. If you said that with us, we're rejoicing because we believe you got born again. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, I'm already saved. I've already accepted the Lord as my personal Savior. But I need to be connected to some like-minded people. I want to get around some people who are serious about the things of God. Listen, we're not a perfect church. I'm not a perfect pastor. But we do serve a perfect God. And he rests in this place. Life Church is a good place to call home. If you are watching and you didn't get an opportunity to sow, we want to give you that opportunity to give any information that's coming up on your screen. There are three ways you can give. You can give by PayPal. You can give by Cash App. You can give by Givelify. The giving information is on your screen.
speaking to every seed sower. Thank you, Lord. That as you give, it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. I believe that the same wealth anointing that rests upon me will rest upon you. And I am praying for you that you will have a testimony on this week, hallelujah, of the Lord's hand at work in your finances. If you would like to partner with us, connect with us, stay in the know of what we've got going on, you may do so. I want you to text the word, one word, partner863 to the number 94090. That's going to keep you informed. It's going to keep you abreast of what we've got going on here at Life Church. I can't wait for you all to see what all God has done and what God is doing and is yet to do. We've got some great things coming up. Amen. And so we're grateful. I want you to be encouraged as we prepare to close out today that no matter what you're facing, no matter what it seems like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what the enemy tries to make you believe, at the end of it all, God, Jehovah, has the final say.